Okay, today we're going to show you how to assemble the AV Gondola 99, which is the new inline display rack to go in supermarkets. You'll get this entire shipment in one large box already on a skid in the back of the store that has the rack, the product, all the signage and everything. We advise that you break that down in the back room into small, all the smaller boxes. Um, keep track of them, of course, put them in shopping carts or a flatbed, bring them out to the sales floor. So I'm going to pick up here as though you are now on the sales floor with your display parts disassembled. And you'll have hardware and all the different parts. It's good for you to scan over the instruction sheets and familiarize yourself with the different parts. And follow the instruction sheet, even after looking at this video, because it's the, it's the ready reference. But the instruction sheet tells you everything that you have. And then the first step is to take the legs and lay them, they're L-shaped legs, lay them on the floor in the store. I've got them approximately four feet across, and you'll see that's why. I'm going to take the upper rail and attach it. This is very important. There's three holes here. Disregard the top hole. We absolutely cannot use the top hole here, so I'm going to just lay this right on the ground on top of the bottom two holes and using the three-quarter inch screws of which there are many and we go first on one side and then the other making sure we're in the lower two holes Okay, once I had all four screws in, you notice, then I tightened them all securely. Now, we want to stand this unit up by lifting this cross rail. Notice, at this point, this is very tippy. You have to take a lot of care not to bump this, knock it over into something or somebody. If the situation presents itself, you can do it against something, great. But I'm just going to just be careful here, and I want you to be aware of that. It will tip until we start getting some other pieces on it. So the next step is we want the front panel, or shroud, four more of the same screws. And you can see the awaiting ports for them, the brass threaded holes, will line up with the four holes in the underside of this. Again, aware that this is tippy, I'm going to lay it right on top. As soon as I have the first screw in, really the first two, one on each side, this begins to grow in stability and it's no longer tipping. And for the front screw, there is a hole through the upper half of this. You can see this is an access screw for my screwdriver. If I have a long enough screwdriver, I can go through the hole right in. Okay, once those four are tight, we're going to go to the rear sight screen. This is a tall unit, and you'll be setting both in, this, in the various stores. Tall versus, look over here on this pre-assembled unit here, short. This is a taller sight screen. Notice that the same two holes, in this case are always at the bottom, are used on either one. If you set a short one, you're putting a short panel. When I'm setting a tall one, I want the panel to extend above 
the uprights. Now for this one, we use different hardware. I've got longer bolts, the black bolts are going to come through the back. And the way to do this, a little bit of a trick, I'm going to pick one bolt, I'm choosing the top hole here, and I'm going to put it through the top hole on this side. Watch how I can sort of hang it on this. Now I'm really not even holding this thing or it's not hard to hold until I get a nut on the front. Okay, now this unit's safe. Again, I want to avoid tipping, but it's not as tippy without that other one. Now that the, the front panel's on it. Look at how I rotate it. You can see what I'm going to do. Screw through the upper hole in the panel, the upper hole in the end, and it's virtually standing now, but I quickly want to get a nut onto it. I'll repeat for the other holes and tighten them. And in this case, we, you, we supplied an Allen wrench to hold this bolt. Okay, next we're going to go to the end panels. The slightly shorter than the previous black screws and nuts will be used. So the end panels, doesn't matter which side is which, I'm going to choose one side. Pretty much just going to sit next to this unit and you can readily see where they go. So I'm coming through the slot in the red end panel and all the way through the inside of this upright. Put a nut on the inside. Repeat down low twice. Notice I had to lift the end panel, line that up because there's play in the end panel. I had to lift till I lined up that hole, and this nut is underneath here. You can feel it better than you can see it. for the other side. At this point, you want to place the, the rack as we have it up on the gondola. So I'm going to just assume, let's say I was working in front of the gondola here, here's the four foot space where I'm going to go. I can lift this any number of ways by the you know, bars or whatever, lift it, get it up, step around it, get it up on the gondola. But the point there is to have it in place and lined up uh, with the adjacent racks on either side. And if need be, now you can adjust the height of this. There are levelers in the front 
and the back that are threaded. You can uh, change the angle of this unit by threading it in or out if you need to try to line this thing up. But it should be in place now and ready for final assembly. The next step we want to do is put our rails on. Notice the notch, the downward facing sharp barb creates this notch. This will go on either side. I want to get that into the, the awaiting notch in this panel and put a nut and bolt through the bottom of this. We'll use a screwdriver to tighten once that's done. And repeat for the other side. There's no screw necessary at the top, only at the bottom. Next we begin with the trays themselves. You will get 10 trays plus one special tray. It's noted on the instruction sheet. You must begin with the one special tray, which is the lower tray. And I'm going to show you the difference right here. If you look at the end of these trays, if I line them up, notice the special tray has no bottom lip on it. All the rest of the trays are this long version. I start with the short one and I put it in the bottom slot. This is like slat wall or you know anything else that hangs. See how I put it in? Rotate it. This one must be at the bottom. Then from there up a tray is a tray. Next. on up till the end. On the first part of the journey, I was looking at all the life. There were plants and birds and rocks and things. There was sand and hills and rain. The first thing Okay, I've got all the trays in. I've got the correct tray at the bottom. Next, I'm going to put the top sign holder in. The sign holder, like the trays, has a longer tab on the bottom. Or another way to look at it is, if you look here, there's a little J-shaped plastic. The J must face upward. So I've got this thing in the correct spot with the J facing upward or the longer tail down. I'm going to walk this over. There's Velcro on the back of this and on the face of the uprights. You can see what I'm going to do. In order to line this up properly, I start, look what I've done. I've rested this right on the tray. This is sitting flat on this tray before I connect either side. Then I rotate it back press the Velcro in place. Now this is locked in place, ready for your sign. You can see now why the J was facing upward. Get that corner started and then get your sign dropped in and we're in good shape. Lastly, we need to install divider clips. In the bag, along with your divider clips, is the divider spacer, which goes either way. I start by putting it next to the right edge. I take a clip, and I'm going to fish it into the tray. You can even peel the tray back here. There's, a, there's an inside channel. 
you can see the way that thing fits on that channel with the tab facing forward. I'm going to take it, slide it over until it hits my spacer card, leapfrog my spacer card, and do it again. Notice that there's a little bit of a te technique to this. The first one will feel like it won't go in. I put it in at an angle with the corner down. This isn't the lip that I put it on, but on the inner lip, imagine this. See how much easier it went with that corner starting first rather than a flat one. So when I go in here, I get my corner started, see that? And then it readily goes right in, slides over, I go on to the next one. Do that row by row, and you're ready to follow the merchandising instructions in your other packet about pocket numbering and correct pocket insertion. Good luck.